Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, we've been talking a lot from, from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And funny enough, we're just in verse uh, 11. Praise <laughs> God. Father, we give you praise for today. We receive today our daily bread. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's revelation being poured out even right now. And everyone is hearing your voice even as I speak. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let's just go on straight now. Praise God. Now it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is what? Jesus Christ. And I took time yesterday to explain to you what this means. It means hearing the voice of Jesus Christ. You know why it's important to hear the voice of Jesus Christ? Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. How do you receive the life? The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Hear me? If you don't hear the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is not the words that a man speaks to you. No. You know, that's how, see, see, many times people get it wrong. Say, I, I believed God. I was walking by faith. You are not walking by faith except you hear the voice of God. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing. And hearing what? The voice of God. If you've not heard the voice of God, faith hasn't come yet. And, but I, I, I believed that God was going to do it. You were hoping that God was going to do it. There was no faith. God will not respond except faith is involved. You see, actually God responds to his word. So the Bible says, the book of Psalms says, they, they cried unto the Lord and he heard them. What did he do? He sent his word. That's what God does. There is no one who God has worked with. And the person just sees a miracle. God first of all sends his word. Now when his word is received and believed, then it does the work. Jesus said in, in the book of John, <clears throat> chapter 14, Jesus said, oh, I love that. You know, you know, he was teaching them about dwelling in him and, and him revealing himself. And, and Judas asked, a, I call that the most intelligent question any man ever asked in the Bible. <laughs> You know, he, Judas said, now the Bible clearly said, no, John actually said, this Judas is not his character, so don't, don't make mistakes about it. <laughs> yeah, like John was saying, you know, Judas does not have the capacity to ask this kind of question. So, so he said, Lord, how are you going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Very intelligent question in that teaching class. <laughs> because he was thinking, when the rain falls, it falls on everyone. You know, now, Jesus is putting us on demand to do something so that he will reveal himself to us. And so, so Judah said, I, I want to get something clear. How is this possible that you're going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus said something very fantastic. Thank God for that question. That's why I always tell people, ask questions. Because sometimes when you, it is questions that bring truth out. So Jesus said, if any man loves me he will keep my word and my father will love him why would my father love him because he's keeping his word and we that's myself and my father we will come and make our abode in him see so now he's not going to reveal himself by showing up up you know oh see jesus oh wow praise god no, he's going to reveal himself by dwelling inside of us. But how does that work? When you keep his word. See, that's where you start from. You start from what? Receiving his word and keeping it. Then when he sees that, now that's why we take communion. That's why we break bread. It is a commitment we are making before the Lord. That Lord, I'm committed to keeping your voice, your word that you speak to me. So Lord, I open my heart to receive your voice. When the word of the Lord comes to you, hold it there and keep it. And what's going to happen to you? Jesus said, my father will love you. Now what does that mean? Does that mean God does not love everybody? Ah, but the Bible said, for God so loved the world. Yes, but he doesn't manifest himself to everybody. 
It's a, another level of love he's talking about. Commitment love. That's what Jesus was talking about. Commitment love. You, know, you get to that point where God knows that he has to do it for you. Praise God. All right. Now, that's the foundation we're talking about. You need to settle that foundation. Now, verse 12. If any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stumble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. You don't start teaching people to depend on you, on you and not on the Lord Jesus Christ. You see that work? It will be tried with fire and it will fail. And, and it's not, it, this is not going to happen on that last day. It's happening even now. You know, many people who put their faith in men, who put their faith in their pastors, and, and suddenly you, you wake up one day and you realize that ah, your pastor is not the saint that you think. And then many people have fallen away from the faith because of that. You see, now what happened to such people? Their works were tried with fire and it's gone. So they weren't building the right building. They weren't building with the right material. Our job is to teach people more and more by our testimonies how to depend on the Lord Jesus Christ and to, and to believe his testimony. That's our job. Now that's why when Jesus came, John said, this is he. He says, I will decrease and he will increase. Praise God. He turned the attention to Jesus Christ. Now that was where John, you know, John the Beloved. John, John the Beloved was a disciple of John the Baptist. <clears throat> so when, when John, the, you know, John the Baptist had been telling them, oh, there is one coming after me. He's greater than me. He's coming. He's coming. Okay. So one day they were together at the, at, at the River Jordan and Jesus came and he says, hey, it is you that God spoke to me about. And John John the Beloved saw it and said, okay. And I'm sure I know that. The Bible said the following day, they were with John. And John said, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the whole world. Two times, my boss have confirmed that this is the one he has been talking about. John said, all right. All right, sir. See you, sir. He got up, you know, he, he, you know what it is like. You're sitting with your pastor, and then, and then here goes another pastor, and then your pastor said, oh, this guy, you know, carries the anointing of God. And then you say, okay, thank you, sir. Pastor, I'll see you later. And then you walk, and before your pastor, you're following another pastor. Praise God. That's what John did. Now, now today, people will think it and say, ah, oh, he, he was not a good, he was not a good disciple. He was not. No! John has been preparing them for Jesus. Now, 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 you can take this from me. That was where even John the Baptist got it wrong. Because when Jesus came, he also would have led his disciples to say, you know what, we are done with our work. The person we came to announce is here. Imagine, you were sent to announce somebody, and now you finish announcing the person, and then the person is on stage now, and you two want to continue. What are you doing for that? Announcing who else? <laughs> the person is here. So what was John supposed to do? Now that's why John died the way he died. He wasn't supposed to be beheaded. No, 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 no. Actually, John had the capacity to leave the earth like Elijah. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm telling you the truth. But you see, because he did not do what was expected of him, he should have gone to Jesus and said, all right, so, so what do we do now? We've been waiting for you. And Jesus will begin to give. And coincidentally, he was his cousin. <laughs> John the Baptist was the cousin of Jesus. And, and six months older than Jesus. Praise God. And, but John the beloved saw it. I said, thank you, sir. And he went to be with Jesus. And, and, and Jesus asked him, what do you want? He said, master, where do you live? And Jesus didn't say, go back to your hogar. No, he said, come and see. And they followed Jesus and the Bible says they never left and went back. They stayed with Jesus. Now that's why John the Beloved had a powerful revelation about Jesus. You know why? He has been waiting for Jesus. So when Jesus came, he grabbed him with his hands and his legs. He had been waiting for you, praise God. Now, just, just, is it just possible? John the Baptist was preaching him but wasn't waiting for him. See, sometimes we, we see things happen, we don't understand why. 
spiritual things are deeper than the natural eyes. Praise God. Now, let's go further. It says, so every man's work will be tried. For if any man's work abide, which he had built thereupon, upon what? Upon Jesus Christ, right? He shall receive his reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So you yourself, you're going to be tested by fire. The things you believe. If your faith, even as a preacher, you, you yourself, you're going to be tested by fire. And then the works you do, your teachings, is going to be tested by fire. See? You know, I told you one time, you know, one, one of the things, even till this day, we still feel the effect of it. Water baptism should have ended with John the Baptist. Because that was what God said he should do. And Jesus will come to be baptized. And that's how he will introduce Jesus. But till this day, we have churches who, if you've not been baptized by immersion, you know, water baptism, you are still not a full believer. Now, who caused that? John the Baptist. See, because he went on. Jesus didn't come to baptize with water. You know, I told you last week, Paul actually said, Jesus didn't send me to baptize. And he meant water baptism. So I'm not baptizing people. That's what John, eh, Paul said. So I don't care about baptizing people because that's not what Jesus sent me to do. But we get baptized in Christ, which is being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. So not water baptism. So if you don't have to be baptized with water. for It, it has no spiritual significance. It has none in, in, in Christ Jesus. Water baptism has no spiritual significance. It doesn't. Praise God. So, so listen, verse 16. It says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Now remember what he said from verse 1. He says, When I came, I couldn't tell you the truth. I couldn't speak to you as spiritual. Now, he, he begins to prepare their hearts so that he can begin to give them some deep truths. So he says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? You are God's temple. Now this is big. Let me ask you a question. Do you think in you, the house you live in, you try to make sure the house is clean. Am I right? You, you don't come to your house and you see cobwebs everywhere. You know, when you go into people's house and you see cobwebs hanging everywhere, what do you think of them? He says, you guys, do you guys live in this house at all? Why? Because you expect them to clean the same way you clean your house. Now think about it. We are God's house. We are God's temple. Do you think God is going to leave his temple dirty? You know, sometimes people say, eh, leave me alone. God knows, God knows who I am and he loves me the way I am. No, sir. No. He accepts you, but he never would leave you the way you are. He will clean you up. Praise <laughs> God. So, so you say, you've been with God one year now and there is no cleaning in your life. I can guarantee you, God is not living in that temple. Because the same way, I came into this house one year ago and I saw these cobwebs and I saw all this death. One year later, I come into this place and I see that the death has even increased. And, and, and they, what's the first thing? I, I don't think anybody was staying here. So see, if God is in you, if you are the temple of, him, of, of God, a cleaning will be taking place in you. So you just begin to realize that. You know, that's what Jesus said he would do to the church. He's cleaning us up, taking away every spot, taking away every blemish. Why? Because we are his temple. Praise God. We are his temple. Say this with me. I am the temple of God. And I'm not going to defile God's temple. And I'm not going to let anything defile God's temple. You know what that means? I will not let sickness defile the temple of God. I will not let poverty, I will not let failure defile the temple of God. You see this temple? Anyone who sees this temple is going to be proud that God stays here. Praise God. Woo! Thank you, Lord Jesus. We've got to stop here because our time is up. I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God. Bye-bye.